almost 8.30 a.m. and we are sitting on an 87% battery life with the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. We are currently in Melbourne Airport because we are on our way to Sydney for the Everything Electric Convention this weekend and I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to do a real day in the life with the S24 Ultra but a travel edition. Quite often I'm at home working on content, filming, editing, photos, emails, admin, you name it. But while doing all that on the trip, I'm also throwing in you know, navigation, using maps, in-flight entertainment, public transport. So it'll be a really good test of the battery life on the phone. I'm still using my loan device. I've had it for a few weeks now and it's been performing really well for me. You guys know I've always said that I need a phone with really good productivity and I haven't really been consistent with phones for a little while, for the last few months anyway, because previous to this, I was on the iPhone 14 Pro Max and then before that was the Google Pixel 8 Pro and before that was the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5. Now the Z Fold 5 was a favorite of mine purely because of the big screen and the multitasking aspect. And this is what the Ultra gives, as well as having a really good camera, really good processing power, RAM, stylus, like it's got it all. And I'm convinced that this is going to be the phone that I do use this year. So come along for a real day in life with the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra because it's gonna be a good one. So this phone has one of the most amazing displays I've ever seen. For starters, 2600 nits of peak brightness to me is game changing. I am someone who does need a bright display because I have vision issues and I have my brightness up all the way because I actually struggle to see screens. And this is one of the brightest phones that I actually have used and it's been super helpful for me. Now throw in that AM OLED with a 120 hertz refresh rate as well. This has just been the best for viewing content. It's definitely just been one of the most amazing displays. And just sitting here at the moment in the airport, watching YouTube on here has just been a dream. check-in. We are sitting at 55% battery life and it has drained a little bit because I have been on YouTube while at the airport. I have been looking at emails, just doing a little bit of work, but usually it doesn't drop that fast. But yeah, like I said, we are traveling at the moment, so it's to be expected. But I'm keen to see how the rest of the day is going to pan out with the battery life because we don't have too much to do, just a little bit of navigation. But I do think it will hold out because it usually does. So stay tuned. But now it is time for lunch. Almost 1.30, battery check-in, we're at 48%. So I'm actually quite surprised at how much it is dropping today because it usually doesn't drop this much. But to be fair, I am out and about and I'm using this phone like crazy. Can confirm when I'm home, all I'm really doing is just recording in the studio, editing videos, browsing social media. I'm not doing as much as what I'm doing today. So factoring in navigation and GPS, that is, it's a different scenario. So of course the battery is going to be used. But we're just taking some photos of the Sydney Harbour Bridge at the moment. So it is 3.20 in the afternoon and we've just checked into the hotel and the phone is sitting at 37%. Now, this is to be expected because I have been using GBS pretty much 
most of the day. I have been at 5G with high refresh rate, high brightness, but I also was recording a lot of time lapses on the plane in 4K. No surprise that the battery has drained as much as it has. And I'm not mad about it because I've done a lot. Now, what we are going to do is we're going on an adventure to the supermarket <laughs> and we have to make a list of stuff to buy. So what a good time to pop out this S Pen and write a note. S Pen time. So we need some drinks and water because there's no water in this hotel room. I'm not sure why. I need some makeup wipes and cleanser. We need some milk because the one is not enough. Snacks because we're on an adventure. We need snacks. Mac is run because McDonald's is downstairs. <laughs> Let's go. Mac has run, done. My throat is now lubricated. We have done makeup wipes and cleanser. So we can tick them off the list now. All right, makeup wipes, cleanser, Mac has run. I actually really love the S Pen. It was partly why I love the Fold 5 so much because it really just helps my productivity. If I quickly need to write something down, I could just pull this out and I've, I've done it. It's great. And then throw in your AI features for it to neaten up your notes as well. It's just kind of perfect. Like, who needs a notebook? Who needs one of those remarkable tablets when you've just got this? Okay, so I'm testing out the dual recording right now. We're going to see what the microphone quality is like without my other mics. And yeah, I totally forgot that you can do front and back dual recording. So this will be interesting. I want to test the stabilization as well because it's been pretty good so far. <laughs> I have little arms, so it's very close to my face. I wish it was a little bit more zoomed out, but I'm also used to recording at 0.05 because <laughs> I prefer the look of it. But at the moment, we're just walking to the supermarket to finish off our shopping list and then. We'll see how AI beats up my handwriting. So that'll be cool because my handwriting is gross. We've got milk. Uh, okay, we need some water. We get some of those because we are thirsty. That's water. And drinks, I meant like a soft drink as well. $3. Whatever. That's going straight to my basket. <laughs> and snacks. What kind of snacks do we want? So we're back in the hotel room and the list is ticked off. But what I want to try is use Galaxy AI and to neaten up my handwriting. Oh, it actually made it straight. Convert to text. Drinks, water, makeup, wipes, cleanser, milk, snacks, Macca's run. It actually got it right. Okay, so it is 4.41 p.m. and battery is sitting at, tw well, that just jumped down to 24%. I was about to say 25%. So it's getting quite low and I'm a little shocked. I will say that I was expecting it to last a little longer, but I can't forget that I really have put it through the ringer today. We've done so much. We've been awake since 5 a.m. So it's been on and working hard since then. But yeah, let's just do a recap of a day in the life travel edition with this phone. So let's talk about the specs. It has a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 processor, 12 gigabytes of RAM, a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, a 6.8 inch dynamic LTPO AM OLED 2X screen with a 120 Hertz adaptive refresh rate and 2600 nits of peak brightness. And not to forget, here are the camera specs. So it's a lot in one small package. But who am I kidding? It's actually not a small package. It is huge for my little hands, but it has everything I could possibly need in a phone. The screen real estate for starters is one of my most favorite things about this phone. Its size and its flat edges, no curved edges, really helps bring the immersion. You feel like you are using every single inch 
of this screen from the middle all the way to the edges with that minimal bezel. Today, the phone has shined for me the most while outside. With that peak brightness, it has really helped with my vision of being able to see everything on my phone, no reflections. It's just been amazing, to be honest. I'm not outside often, I will say that. And it was quite overcast today, but even where there was moments of sun or bright light, the brightness allowed everything to shine through and I could see exactly what I was doing, especially when we were down at the Sydney Harbour taking photos. I was able to look at the viewfinder and snap my photos without any glare. So that is a huge win for me. Flicking back and forth between apps today with no lag is also a dream come true. There's no delay, everything just works. You're able to get from one app to the other, swipe screen, swipe menus. That refresh rate and that processing power really helped to bring that experience to life. And I will say that even my Pixel 8 Pro still has issues when it comes to switching from apps really quickly. Some apps will just shut down and the experience could be a little bit laggy. Whereas with the S24 Ultra, I haven't experienced that yet. And I have had this phone for a few weeks. So let's talk about Galaxy AI a bit because for me, the user that I am, it's not something that I really need. And I say that because there's a lot of features that it has that I don't actually use. So Galaxy AI is formed in a few different ways and you've got it across your camera or your photo editing aspect, you've got it in your notes app, you've got it in your web browser, and you've got it with text messages and calls. And I do think that the live translation in voice calls, as well as the text translation for text messages, these are really situational based and not everyone's going to use them, but the fact that it is natively built into the phone and message app on this phone is a huge win because you kind of just don't know when you're going to need those things. Like this is a travel edition of a day in the life, but we are only traveling domestic. We're not going international. So if I was going international and needed to translate or you know, call a restaurant or call a place for reservation, those types of AI situations would be really helpful. Summarizing web articles is for me actually pretty handy because I do just lose my train of thought sometimes and get quite distracted. So if there is something I want to read while I'm really tired or I'm procrastinating, just being able to hit that summarize button and have it all simplified for me is great because then I can work out if I want to read more or just move on to something else. Again, situational based. I don't think it's something that people are going to use every day but it's a nice to have. I think this is a step in the right direction for AI and we know companies are really wanting to take that to the next best thing, however they do it. But having these sorts of things natively built into phone apps and not having to use third party apps, I think is a really great move. And I'm excited to see how these phone companies can progress from here. Camera, I love the camera. I do often shoot in 12 megapixels and sometimes the 50. I don't go to the 200 megapixels. I do, however, think it shines the most with scenery and being out in public, but I'm yet to take a lot of photos in my studio with controlled lighting of product. I feel like it might struggle a little bit there because my studio is dark, like I do have lighting, but it's still a darker environment. But being able to take really nice photos of scenery and animals and people, I think it does a decent job. And lastly, the design. I think this phone is so beautiful. The titanium edges are really, really nice. The purple that I have here, the violet, a really stunning color with that natural edge, but I do think the titanium gray is my favorite out of the four. I pair the phone with my Galaxy Watch 6 Classic and my JBL Tour Pro 2 Buds. And honestly, that trio is like the perfect daily driver. So much awesomeness together. They all work so great. And yeah, I am really excited to just continue using this combo throughout the year. So should you buy the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra? Well, I can only speak on behalf of this model for this year because I've never used a flagship model from Samsung. I've only used the Fold 5 and I loved that but this is just so much better and I genuinely think that a if you're a Samsung user or b you want to make the jump from Apple to Android this is a definite yes you should definitely buy this I think it is really worth the money and I'm really excited to just keep using it throughout the year as my daily driver thank you so much to Samsung for allowing me the opportunity to use this phone for a couple of weeks this video was not sponsored but I did do some other sponsored videos with Samsung and it's just been really fun to take you along for you know a real day in the life travel edition and how I use my phone when I'm on the go I see a lot of potential for this phone 
So I hope you got something out of this video. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Tired eyes, I am so tired from traveling.